December 26, 1991, 10.08 p.m. The McDonnell Douglas MD-81 aircraft arrives in Stockholm from Zurich. freezing temperatures, and as the night progresses, clear ice, frost and sleep builds up on the upper side of the wing. This is compounded by fuel at sub-zero temperature, which is supposed to have been channeled to the central tank. This is the first mistake by the maintenance crew. 2 a.m. Flight technician checks for clear ice, but the standard operating procedure is wrong since no walkabout is done on the wings and improper equipment is used. This is the second mistake. At 7.30 am, the captain calls for two de-icing procedures. He gets the ok from the flight technician when this is finished. However, no post de-icing inspection was done. This is mistake number 4. Meanwhile, the passengers and the pilots board. The captain failed standard operating procedure, leaving the cockpit door open, in which he states brings a sense of humanity between the pilot and the passengers. The pilots right perform pre-flight checks. <laughs> right. The passengers are unaware of the impending danger that's about to take place. Eight thirty AM The plane takes off. At eight forty seven it begins rotation and the clear ice begins to break off from the upper side of the wing. However, there is a failure among the passengers to communicate this to the crew, so the pilots are unaware. Both engines are left severely damaged. Pilot identifies that the left engine is surgeon, but due to their lack of situational awareness, they have failed to realize that the second engine, the right engine, has also surged. The surge occurs when the primary fans undergo damage affecting the air compression causing the fuel at the back to ignite and explode forward. The engine fails to withstand the surge as stated by the manufacturer. Having identified the surge in the left engine, the captain throttles down. However, due to they being unaware of the automatic thrust restoration system, this causes permanent damage to the engine killing boot. It was later stated that the manufacturer did not inform the Scandinavian Airlines of the feature. The aircraft is now gliding. Attempts to restart the left engine causes it to ignite. The first officer, without consulting the captain, quickly extinguishes it as they both fail to communicate. Pilots on board as a passenger, Captain Paul Humboldt, is now certain that the crew is struggling to respond to the emergency. Making a decision any true professional would have done, he decides to enter the cockpit. He is asked to start the auxiliary power unit. Start the APU. He shows his knowledge and competence when he gets the auxiliary power unit started. Meanwhile, the crew struggles with the manufacturer's booklet and fails to find the emergency procedure. 751. Good morning, SK 751. Climb to flight level 180. We have problems with our engines, please. We need to go back to... to go back to our lender. We can maintain 2,000 feet. We are not able to maintain 2,000 feet. We are descending. We are at 1,600 feet and descending. Oh, oh, oh now recognizes that the plane is gliding and commands the captain to look straight and focus on flying the plane. The flight captain shows 
his skills as in the own pilots to plane manually. They decide to land the plane in an open field. The pilot uses the top of the pine trees as cushioning. A great decision by him. Meanwhile, Pearl Holmberg is unable to get to his seat and goes beyond the call of duty by remaining in the cockpit yes. before it's too late. Stockholm Scandinavian 751, we are crashing into the ground now. The aircraft crashes in a field 15 kilometers from the airport and slides 110 meters and breaks into three pieces. However, miraculously, there are no fatalities. The crew shows great professionalism as reported when they evacuate everyone from the aircraft and the first responders arrive within minutes, which is really commendable. This event forever changed the aircraft industry. Since this incident, the following recommendations were made as stated in the final incident report. The FFA issued mandatory introduction of piping for inboard refueling systems and also an ice alert system. The aircraft manufacturer now circulates AOL on the procedures to inspect and prevent clear ice buildup. The airline company introduced their own methods and equipment for clear ice before and after the icing trans and also transferring fuel from the wing tanks to the center tanks and engine protection covers. This event distinguished the qualities that are needed for future pilots like yourself, such as dedication, leadership, courage, preparedness, duty, and the will to never give up. Since this incident, Captain Stefan Ramsebulk has retired due to his inability to perform up to the standard. His flight officer, Ulf Sidemark, continues to pilot aircraft now. However, the unsung hero of this event was Captain Pearl Holmberg, who demonstrated the will, the tact and the knowledge. In his own personal account of the situation, he stated, Whatever happens, never forget that you are a pilot. When anything starts to go wrong, use good airmanship and never, never give up until you are at a standstill on the ground again.